For more than 20 years, I've been teaching strategy and assisting companies around the world in developing strategic plans. I've also been a guest lecturer at the Wharton School of Business on strategy and strategic thinking for the last 18 years. And what I'd like to do in this video is share with you some of the big ideas I've learned in spending that long looking at strategy and strategic execution. First, you have to realize that all strategy is just a guess. Now, it's a well-informed and thoughtful guess, but nobody can predict the future. It's hard enough to know what's going to happen five weeks or five months from now in the marketplace, let alone five years. So just remember that what you're doing isn't set in stone. You're not predicting the future, you're anticipating the future and trying to prepare yourself for success in the future. Also, strategy is just the allocation of limited resources. Even Google, Apple, and Amazon do not have totally unlimited resources. So you've got to sit down and think about where do we allocate our scarce resources? What do we invest in? And just as important is, what do we not do? I figured that out just a few years ago that one of the most important things a great strategic thinker does is figuring out what to say no to. Another thing to keep in mind is that strategy is internal as well as external. I think when a lot of people look at strategic planning, they're thinking about how to position the company in the marketplace against their competitors. That is a big part of it. But it's also looking internally around things like talent, acquisition, development, retention, around culture, around communications. Uh, those are things that internally, if you don't get those right, it doesn't really matter how profound your external strategy is. And lastly, around these sort of big ideas, is that I think the single most important skill to be really good as a strategic thinker is pattern recognition. When you can understand your industry, your competition, your customers better than anyone else, when you can look at the data and the information and see the spikes and see the anomalies and see a trend starting before other people see that trend, that is where you get competitive advantage and you can create a really strong strategy. That brings me to the first formula I want to teach you. And this is basically my entire class from Wharton boiled down into one sentence. And here it is. All effective strategy is just valued differentiation multiplied by disciplined execution. Let me tell you what that means. In other words, you have to bring something to the marketplace that is unique and compelling that is highly valued by your customers, they're more than happy to pay for it, they're not gonna argue about price at all, that is difficult, if not impossible, for your competition to copy, and that you can execute on flawlessly. If you can create a strategy that meets those four criteria, you will have a truly differentiated and very difficult to compete against strategy. Another formula I just developed, because I love formulas, is the idea that strategy today must comprise these things. Long-term view plus agility times disciplined execution. Uh, you've got to be able to look out three, four, five years. Used to be we'd look out 20 years or 10 years. Most of the clients I work with have a hard time looking out more than three to five years. But you've got to have that long-term view of looking at where the market's going, where you want to bring your company, how you want to grow it, what your mission, your vision, your values are. But you also have to realize that the market moves very fast, faster in some industries than others, but you've got to have agility, adaptability. Uh, you've got to be able to move quickly when the market demands it. And then you take those two things of the long-term view, where do we want to be in three, five, 10, 20 years, plus what do we need to do today, right now? How do we move? How do we stay fast and nimble? And then all of that, again, has to be multiplied by disciplined execution. The best plan in the world is completely useless if you can't execute it. My good friends and business partners in New Zealand at Advisory Works are probably the world's leading experts on this topic. And what I've learned for them is there's four pillars to strategic execution. First pillar is strategic intent. Where do you want to take your business? Where do you see the future? Uh, the best way I can phrase this is you must have a vivid, compelling, and well-communicated vision and strategy for growth. That is the foundation of having a solid strategic intent. The second pillar is disciplined execution. And to me, this all boils down to having clear, specific, measurable, and binary goals. One, zero, black, white, yes, no, no guessing. Another really powerful idea I learned from the team at Advisory Works is ambiguity breeds mediocrity. 
If you want to effectively execute your plan, people have to know where they stand against that plan. You've got to track your key result areas, your key performance indicators, and, and give people exceedingly clear expectations about what they need to do today and next week and next month to get to where the plan's driving. The third pillar is high performance leadership. And this is an idea I understood, but it really came into sharp focus in just the last few years, which is the entire organization is a direct reflection of the senior management team. You've got a dysfunctional senior management team, you will have a dysfunctional organization. But if you have a high performance leadership team that is clearly focused, has open, honest, robust communication, handles conflict well, uh, communicates with the rest of the organization well, when they've got all those elements and more and they're really a great leadership team, you have the chance to build a highly successful company. The fourth and final pillar is culture. And I have a saying, culture equals cash. In most of the businesses I work with across the globe, the single biggest place where they could increase revenues and profitability, decrease costs and waste, increase their market share, is in creating a culture of highly engaged, satisfied, and loyal employees. And as I said in the last pillar, that's all run by high performance leaders. So those are just a few of the big ideas I've learned about strategy and strategic execution in more than 20 years of studying strategy, teaching strategy, and assisting companies of every size in every industry around the world on creating strategic plans. This isn't the only stuff you need to know about strategy, but I do believe it's important things that you should keep in mind. I hope you found this helpful.